This is a detailed video on how to both desolder the old display and correctly reposition and resolder a replacement. So to do this, we're going to use um, this guy here. This is a hot air desoldering gun, temperature controlled. And this is about the best way to remove these displays. Although you can use a uh, gas soldering iron like this one with the, uh, without the tip on it. This has kind of got like a uh, hot air tip. Uh, important to notice that this is not a blowtorch. There's no flame that comes out at the end of this. Uh, if you have one that has a flame at the end of it, like a miniature blowtorch, do not use it, it will burn the board. Okay, so let me turn on this guy. I'll typically use a pair of tweezers to get underneath the ribbon and start to lift it off the board. So, and these particular tweezers are angle tip so kind of look like this and what we're going to do is we're going to put this underneath the ribbon very very careful not to scratch the board so it's quite tight underneath there sometimes you have to lift this up a little bit fingers get the blades underneath and right near the pins and um, that's the area where the ribbon is strongest and then just begin to heat aggressively along the ribbon while applying very light force. And remember, you know, the, the board is easily damaged here. You need to make sure that the solder's properly melted. So anything more than a very small amount of force on this ribbon cable is just too much. There we go, it's starting to lift. Just work your way along slowly, lifting as you go. Just be careful some of the adjacent components too because sometimes the heat will also loosen those up off the board which is of course not desirable we don't want to move them so just be very careful with this sometimes some of these pins will get left behind but we can get those off with a soldering iron in a moment the key here is just to apply plenty of heat uh, so as you don't damage the underlying board there we go that's the old display removed turn off the heat gun um, Closer look at this, we can see the result. Uh, you can see there's a couple of bits of messy solder on there and the old pin, but now I'll remove those with the soldering iron. Okay, so now to clean up the pads. Now, in the vast majority of cases, there's no need to add any solder to these pads either. The priority here is to clean them so that when we apply the new ribbon cable, it connects uh, correctly and thoroughly to the board. So. Um, what I normally do is I use a little bit of flux, something like this. Uh, it comes in a syringe, in a paste format, and I use a toothpick like this to apply this flux along the ribbon area. And what this enables the solder to do is to flow nicely on the pad and gives us a nice mounting surface for the new ribbon. It also means it's easier to remove any remaining fragments of the old display. So I'm going to apply the flux just along the pads here. Smear it along. It's not an issue how much you put on here. We can clean this off with some PCB cleaning solvent later. Um, just bring it along, smear it along the whole end. Now I'm using a bench magnifier to uh, to see thoroughly how to do this. You can do it with the naked eye, but it's more risk of getting solder short. So if I just bring the camera up, you can see the bench magnifier there. And so I'm going to be using that to get this accurately cleaned and ready to go. So. Uh, using a normal soldering iron. Yeah, I'm going to go in and clean each of these pads. So you just swipe along the pad, and then there's no risk of making a bridge between one and the next. So always go along the direction of the pad and not across. And you can see as I go through, just wiping it with a soldering iron, literally, and the flux really lets it melt nicely. And we get a nice flat pad with clean solder and a layer of flux. Um, here we've got an old pin off the old display. Again, heat this up and it will just slide off like that. There is on the tip. We can remove that. Keep going through. Here's another one that's got some old material on it. Again, just slide it off with the iron, sticks to the iron. Um, yep, and then wipe it off into the cleaning pad there and then just keep going through. Again, with the magnifier, it's quite easy to see you know, whether there are any shorts or anything on here before we put the new connector uh, display on. 
here's another old these are the old display and then keep going through and wipe along the pad like this um, okay and then can keep going and do the remainder okay and then you can see we've got you know nice clean pad none are damaged and ready for the new display to be soldered so I'll bring the sorry for lighting here but those are the pads um, cleaned and ready to go so um, you'll notice that I've also removed the uh, the display support that sits underneath the LCD display that's where is it uh, So that's uh, you know, this piece here, and it normally sits in there, and the display goes over the top. So I've removed that for ease of access. Um, and also, when we test these boards later on, we actually also test to make sure that all these backlighting LEDs in here are all working correctly. Okay, so here's um, the replacement display um, on the back side. You can see this one has a silver backing. Um, this is one of the better quality uh, aftermarket displays. The original ones that were fitted to this cluster are no longer available. Um, there's a wide range of quality with these, so if you're going to buy your own replacement, do your homework, make sure you get one with a good contrast. Many of them are just like washed out and way too bright when you put them in the car, and it's just really distracting when you're driving, particularly at night. So you do your homework, make sure you get a good quality display. So as before, when we remove the old display, I'm going to add some more flux along these connections. There's already some here anyway, but you know, there's, there's no substitute for plenty of flux on these. It ensures a really nice, clean connection. And remember, the joint is actually underneath the ribbon cable on the display, so you can't actually see uh, very well, you know, guarantee that the connection's good underneath. But if it looks nice and shiny on the top and there's a good meniscus on the solder, then we're pretty, good, pretty sure you've done a, a good job of soldering it. I also do the same thing with the display. So if I have to move this out of the way a second, display here. So you know, the same way as I've done with the board, a very, very fine um, run of, of flux along the top of this ribbon. Uh, again, just a matter, you can use your finger actually on here just to thin, thing that out and smear it along, make sure it's very thin. Don't need too much on here. And the same underneath, apply it again with a toothpick so it doesn't damage anything. And then a very light smear across here. Move that out of the way. Um, actually before you go any further I can just show you that I, I'm using a anti-static grounding strap here for good practice. And right. So I position the board back there. Just lay the display very loosely where it needs to go. Now the trick here is to solder one or two of the end pins in first. Again I'm going to use the magnifier to, for this it's really important here to make absolutely sure that the pads are aligned between the board and the ribbon connector. They're only like a half mil or something between centers here, or a mil maybe, very, very small. If you get the thing slightly misaligned, you're absolutely going to open yourself up to short circuits between the pins and bad connections. So the alignment is really important. Again, I'm using the bench magnifier for this because it's much more easy to get it precise. And um, you see I've not applied any solder. So there's no need. There's enough on the pads already to enable these to solder in properly as you'll see so um, if I come in now I'm going to put the solder wire in position I'm going to move this with my fingers just to get it lined up looking through the magnifier so I can see the pins are aligned and, and the, it's important in this case to align the pins on the display on the ribbon cable to the bottom pad on the board there are extra pads that are not used on this uh, on this particular printed circuit board and on all the Audi TT clusters to make sure the bottom pin here is aligned with the bottom pad on the board. Also, make sure you can see roughly a millimeter or two of pad sticking out beyond the gold connectors on the ribbon cable. This is partly because you know, it's much easier to see whether you've got you know, a really nice quality joint. It doesn't need to fully overlap, um, but do make sure it's square. So in here, I'm aligning the very carefully aligning the pads to make sure they're 100% aligned and then I'm going to put a little bit of solder on that end one um, that's enough to tack it on and then this end one here okay and that will hold that in place now as well if my fingers away you can see if I tap it gently that's not moving now so that's properly aligned now uh, now what we do is we take something like the toothpick again and use the toothpick to actually hold the, uh, the ribbon in place as we solder it. Again, the toothpick's great for this. It's non-conductive, 
non-scratching, it's nice and soft and very cheap and disposable. So um, what I come and do here, starting from the second pin down, press it very slightly with a toothpick and then put the iron on top and heat it. And you can see the solder's flowing along that pad. And again, move the iron this direction along the pad, not this way. Um, that's the second pin done. I can then go back to the first pin and then re-solder it again to make sure it's properly connected this time. And then just work your way down every single pin, gently heating it with the iron like this and going a long ways. And you can see beautiful shiny joints here. Um, and you can see the flux flowing around as, these heat, as this heats up. And you see there's plenty of solder here. There's no need for any more. There's enough on the pads. Um, this is providing a nice joint and less solder means less chance of a short circuit between the pins. So you can work your way all the way down the connector like this. And then resolder the final pin at the end. So the ribbon is now resoldered. I'm going to check it very closely with a magnifier to make sure we have no bridges in there. No solder bridges, that looks absolutely fine. You can see the flux is on there, but we'll clean that later. So I'll show you the camera here. You can see the solder. Plenty there, no need to add anything, and that's you know reduces the risk of any shorts. So now what we'll do is we'll refit the central holder for the display and then we'll just test it, see if it works okay. Okay, so prior to, prior to testing the LCD, I'm going to just power the board up and make sure that the backlights that sit behind the display, which are located here, are all working correctly. Um, sometimes these go bad or more usually bad solder joints around these resistors and some of the others on the back that cause these to flicker. So we always do um, a test for these joints and the way we do that is a little bench cable here we use to test these and you can plug that. Um, actually, let's release the clip first. So it's in the unlocked position, um, plug the connector in, slide straight in and then pull the lock back like that. Slide down here. Now if I power it on, you can see the lights start to come on and you can see the display's actually working. We haven't got the diffuser in yet, so it'll look a bit strange until that's done. But we can gently fold this back. It's only glass, it won't short anything. And you can see the display illumination here, this matrix. What we usually do is just give it a little twist to make sure that's working. And yeah, sometimes we do get um, intermittent joints on here on any of these LEDs. I think I just saw these two guys flicker, but that's pretty common. Um, but the important thing is to make sure that these are working. Uh, as a rule of thumb, we usually do resolder these resistors here um, because they are uh, responsible for feeding power into the top part of this display and they are prone to fail. And there's some on the back on the other side, so it takes a few seconds. We resolder them anyway. But you can see those backlights look okay, and you can see the display is actually working without the back plate. Now, as this video is primarily focused on soldering, I'm going to show you the technique that I use to resolder. You know, these surface mount components on here. Again, this generally applies to pretty much all of them. Um, but again, we do not apply solder. Generally, you don't have to do that to apply solder. If the joint looks very dry and there's no meniscus at the end of the component, then apply a very small amount. Um, we advise using a half mil um, solder, which is like this one here. It's um, and this actually is a leaded solder because it's more compatible with older electronics, but. Yeah, the fine wire is important so you don't over solder the joint and the solder tip on the soldering iron um, I'm just clean this a bit clean yeah, this is a half millimeter tip um, you can get smaller I believe but generally this is enough and just keep the tip clean when you're soldering um, and retin it once in a while so I'm going to apply some uh, flux around these surface mount resistors near the top of this display here um, and then resolder them and hopefully we'll see I'll try and get a bit closer here Hopefully you'll see the solder flow around those at the ends of those components um, and remake the joints. Now, sometimes when you do this, heat up one end, the whole component falls off the board, which just tells you for sure that one end had fractured and it was not actually making a good connection. In which case, use the tweezers, unsolder both ends, you know, refit the, the component and then resolder both ends. And uh, But that's pretty common on these TT clusters now, these bad broken solder joints. They can be pretty much anywhere. But these larger resistors tend to be the bigger culprits. So if we... Apply some solder. I'll just do these ones here, so a little bit on that one on either end, like this. Just a tiny bit of flux, no solder, just flux here. Um, not very much, don't need huge amounts. Um, the same flux I used on the um, ribbon cable earlier on, and then make sure that each end has a reasonable coating on there. 
And this is important because it means you don't get dry joints, it refluxes the solder and it will flow nicely uh, back underneath the component. So yeah, but make sure we've got plenty on there. Generally these LEDs, sometimes they need resoldering, but most of the time they're actually okay. Right, okay, so we, again I'm going to bring the, uh, the magnifier in to do this effectively. A bit noisy, sorry about the noise. Um, and then I can see the components properly. Again, I want to do this because I can see the solder flowing. It gives me total confidence that the joint's good. So again, just bring the iron in uh, to the end of the component. And you can, oh, look, there we go. That one's fallen off. So here's a culprit already that's a, that's a failure. So that one had come and unsold on the other end, which shows you just how bad these boards can actually be. Um, and you can imagine it takes some time to go through the usual culprits on this board are where things usually go wrong and go through all of them and resolder them. So now I'll show you how to do this. This is where it starts getting a bit more tricky. So you basically have to pick up the component with the tweezers, heat up the end that you just melted, right there we go, and then position it back right above the two pads where it's got to go. Um, this can be quite tricky, but then once you've got it in the right place, just apply a little bit of pressure on the top with the tweezers and resolder that one end. Okay, and then the one end soldered, it won't move anymore. And then we can flow this end. And then we have, but we don't want to make sure, a resoldered component. So great example of how these things fail. Um, and we can go through the others and see if we've got any others. Of course, if you happen to resolder the fractured end first, you'll never know because the component won't move. Um, surface mount electronics like these, these boards here that are subject to lots of heat cycles and vibrations, which you obviously find a lot of in automotive applications. You know, this is an increasing problem. It's by no means limited to the Audi TT cluster. And, uh, you know, we, we're seeing it increasingly with more you know, newer cars like the uh, later platform A5s and A4s where, you know, these components come away and, uh, and cause intermittent failures. So we've refitted this uh, central diffuser that, that uh, the LCD display is mounted to. In this case, we've actually added a, a, another layer of film underneath the diffuser films in here. And this is because this further darkens down these displays even though this is a good quality one it's still a bit brighter than stock and this gets us down to pretty much stock levels as you'll see uh, when we power this up but to get this back in it's going to be very carefully lift the ribbon over and you'll see i'll put this back in place too this must go under the display and then bring it back slide the edge of the display underneath these two plastic tabs here and just draw it long ways making sure that stays in place underneath slide it along like that um, these are just tabs that hold uh, this protective film on, which we'll remove later. Pull this a little bit out here slightly, push this down, release it, and that's now locked in place. So that's where it needs to go. Um, if we power this on now, we will see that display comes up. There we go. Considerably better than the, uh, the one that came out. Okay, so now on to uh, cleaning this, get the flux off, and then we can begin the, the reassembly process. Now that's the end of this video on uh, how to solder a replacement LCD display into a Mark 1 Audi TT. Thanks for watching. So just a little bit of bonus footage here, I decided to take a shot of the uh, solder ribbon. This is after I've cleaned it through the magnifier, so I come down here. You get to see a lot closer up, you know, the resoldered joints all the way through there.